Did you know ASBN, America's Small Business Network, is now available on your TV? That's right. ASBN is now streaming on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire Stick, and available for download in the App Store. Scan the QR code to download the ASBN app today. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Cheyenne Malone, exclusively on ASBN.com. Hi everyone, I'm Cheyenne Malone. You're watching another edition of The Small Business Show exclusively on ASBN.com and now streaming on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Okay, you probably didn't know this, but uh, one in five Americans has left a job in the past five years due to bad company culture. Imagine this. On today's show, we are joined by Matt Mayberry. He's CEO, keynote speaker, and author. Lots of things behind your, your name and your title there, Matt. So your newest book is Culture is the Way, How Leaders at Every Level Build an Organization for Speed, Impact, and Excellence. Um, tell us more about this book and what it explores. You know, what it what it really explores is not only the importance of culture, but I think really addressing some of the negative misconceptions of what culture really stands for. I, I think for so many years, you know, even in, in athletics, but I think a lot of times more so in the business world, you know, culture is deemed as fluff. It, it's viewed as something soft. It's viewed as something, you know, when we get around to having the time to paying attention and cultivating it, that's when we'll focus on it. So, you know, the, the first half of the book is really addressing those negative misconceptions because in order to build a great workplace culture, regardless of what industry or sector we're talking about, you have to understand the critical importance of actually doing that and being very intentional in that. And then, you know, the, the second half of that book is really providing, you know, an actionable and practical handbook on how leaders at all levels can really build a workplace that not only inspires team members, but helps team members become the very best version of themselves while also accelerating the growth of executing its its strategy. It seems to me almost uh, now more than ever, culture is is very crucial, critical, important in so many ways. Do you agree and why or why not? I couldn't agree more. I, I think the whole part of that book is me hopefully making an inspirational plea about you know, if you haven't been devoting the time and intentionality around building culture, right now is the time to do that. Um, I, I think for me, being a former athlete, I played at Indiana University and then my short stint in the NFL with the Chicago Bears, being an athlete really gave me the perspective of culture is everything. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the competition can copy your sales process. They can copy your go-to-market strategies. In the business world, though, the one thing the competition can't mimic and copy is your internal culture. And really culture, as I define it in the book, is really behavior at scale. So I think to answer your question of why do I think culture is the most important thing is because it, it's how your organization behaves. It, it's how the people within your organization, how do they think about, you know, what your organization consists of, what it's what it's made up of. You know, that's the DNA of your organization. So that's why I think it's, it's so critically important. Uh, okay, so a question, since you said you're an athlete, obviously former, um, I too played college ball, I played volleyball. There are some jobs out there that literally look for athletes, the background, the mentality. Why is that? Can you break that down for us? And is it perhaps part of the culture portion? Absolutely. I think there's a lot to uncover and unpack there. I, I think, number one, the competitive spirit of former athletes. I think that they understand that every single day you have to go compete regardless of our previous achievements or what we've achieved in the past, every single day we have to go out and compete. I, I think that's number one. But I think from a cultural perspective, it's really understanding that I may be able to do things as an individual by myself, but what I can do with uniting in a, a cohesive team together and really uniting around a common and compelling vision of the future is, is more than anything I could do on my own. And I think athletes understand the importance of teamwork. They understand the importance of building culture. And really, I think they live that. So I think that is really why so many athletes, uh, I think there's incredible opportunities out there in the business world for them. Can you teach culture? Yes, you can. And I think you first started, you know, one of the thing in the book, I lay out a five-step process of how to start doing that, building a world-class culture. And, you know, one of the most important parts in that process is leaders have to blaze the trail. So whether you're a small business owner, you're an executive within the medium uh, to large size company or even a small business doesn't matter. The leaders of that company first have to live the values. You have to behave the way that you want your team to behave. So you you teach culture by first living it yourself as a leader. 
Can you give us any examples of companies or small businesses that maybe you've worked with or maybe they read your book uh, and they were able to transform their culture and what was the outcome? Yeah, I think first and foremost, I think from a large scale perspective, I think Microsoft has done a fantastic job there. I think of, you know, really instilling the growth mindset culture, what they've been able to do around all their training initiatives and really, uh, you know, behavior at scale, as I mentioned. I, one company I do feature in the book, um, you know, and kind of uncovering that five-step framework and process is Southern Glaciers Wine and Spirits, particularly their Indiana and Illinois divisions. Of, of kind of how they were in the very beginning of the process, you had leaders who were committed to trying to improve the culture, but they didn't necessarily understand the significance of it. And then over the course of a two-year period of what really transpired when all leaders finally, like 25 leaders on that executive leadership team, fully immerse themselves in actually cultivating a high-performing culture. Uh, so I kind of uncover that in the book of, you know, really overcoming some of those stumbling blocks in the very beginning, and then what was done to mitigate some of those challenges and headwinds along the way uh, to help instill a positive, thriving workplace culture. Man, if a wine and spirits company could have bad culture, <laughs> who can't, right? You know, that you think of that as a fun environment. <laughs> What are some key takeaways you want uh, readers to walk away with after reading your book? I, I think number one, just kind of where I started the conversation, you know, I think fully understanding that, you know, culture truly is one of your biggest competitive advantages. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the one thing that, you know, differentiates you from everybody else. I, I think you have to start there. And I think then it's pivoting to, you know, the importance, like Harvard University did a study of, of 200 organizations were in that study. Half of the organizations that were in that study you know, they talked about culture, they they tweaked around with culture, but they didn't invest the time, energy and resources in actually building it. The other half of the organizations in that study, they immersed themselves into building culture. They put their money, resources, energy, time, everything behind cultivating and building culture. What Harvard University found in that study is that over the span of a decade, the organizations that immersed themselves in building culture grew revenue by 756% over the span of close to a decade. Now, if I was to ask you what would do that over the span of a decade, that list is going to be very, very, very small. Mm -hmm. So culture is not just to make your people feel happy. It truly is the driving mechanism to execute your strategy in the marketplace. And how do we drive that home to upper level management? I, I think, you, you know, you really have to start with, you know, going through a process of really being intentional around defining your culture. Um, and what I mean by that is that every organization, I'm very cautious in the book of, you know, best practices, because there's so many books, there's so many articles. And I think a lot of times you have a lot of leaders that may go to a conference, they may read a great book, they, they take nuggets of wisdom from that conference or book, and they try to replicate it within their company. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But what I mean by defining your culture is you have to understand the situation that you're in, you have to understand the organization you're in. But you then have to define your culture. Everyone in the organization has to know what is your culture, what does it stand for, and then how do we set a standard of expectation? So that, that's really what I mean by defining your culture. What is the standard? What is the expectation? And then having the leaders, right, of how you actually cultivate culture, mm -hmm. the leaders then have to live up to that expectation every single day, setting that standard from there. You, you witness the magic of, of over the span of six months to a year. Building culture is not a short-term process, but there is something magical that happens when you start to set that standard and leaders live it. For the entrepreneurs who are watching and small business owners that you know are just trying to wrap their head around culture and what it should look like for them, what advice do you have there? You know, I, I think that there there really is not a one size fits all. I think, sure. you know, it's important to start there because I think an entrepreneur or even small business owner, they might be in a different spot than, let's say, a medium to large size company. I, I think the very most important part to start, and this isn't just for small business owners or entrepreneurs, um, even medium to large size, you know, executives and leaders. You know, it, it truly, you know, I talked about kind of the significance of dr driving revenue, uh, increasing profit margin. But I think also on the flip side of that, of why it's so important for entrepreneurs and business owners is because the, the the talent competition and the war for talent right now is really greater than it's ever been before. And the ability to go out into the marketplace and actually attract top talent, retain top talent, and then have that top talent cultivate and become the best version of themselves, it starts with culture. So I think that, you know, I meet so many small business owners and entrepreneurs that want to win the war for talent. 
But one of the things that they're neglecting a lot of the times and looking past it is how do I start with building a really thriving work world-class culture with what that could look like for my particular business. Do you think a toxic work environment for a lot of people has pushed them on the road to entrepreneurship? Absolutely. I think more than ever, I think not only push them on the path of entrepreneurship, but I think you're seeing more people right now, you know, leave workplaces um, because of toxic workplace. You're, you're even seeing high performers where they're compensated very, very handsomely. Uh, they're still leaving because, you know, what we're all seeing is that, you know, as important as pay is, what's more important is a purpose. You know, people want to work for an organization or a business where there's a deeper lining purpose than just profit alone. They want to feel that they're a part of something special and that that they're really contributing to that larger purpose. So I, I think right now, more than ever, you're having people leave to become an entrepreneur, but you're also having people leave toxic workplaces to go somewhere else. Maybe competition even. Any final Maybe. thoughts, Matt? Yeah, I think my the, the, the final thought was just, you know, is to not overcomplicate the process. I think a lot of times when, when people, you know, business owners or entrepreneurs hear about culture, right, it can be very complicated at first. It can, um, you know, really just, I think, get in the way from then taking that first step. And as I, as I kind of lay out in the book, you know, culture is the way, you know, taking that first step and having a deep level of rigor and intentionality around just getting started mm -hmm. is that very first step. Because what you'll find out is once you get started and just start taking action is that you'll start to uncover and unpack some of the moving pieces and pieces to the puzzle that maybe weren't there in the very beginning. Those start to materialize the more you just start taking action. So my, my final lasting words is to just get started right now. There's no better time than right now if you haven't been devoting the time, effort, and energy towards it. All right. Well said. Matt Mayberry, CEO, keynote speaker, and author. Thanks so much for joining us and your insight today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching the Small Business Show exclusively right here on ASBN.com and now streaming on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Cheyenne Malone, exclusively on ASBN.com.